Paul tells us that it was neither by the blood of goats and calves, that by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us, Hebrews 9 and 12, Hebrews 9 and 26, then again, but now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. The Bible states in Hebrews 10 and 12, but this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. Hallelujah. Jesus paid the price. If you're making 
notes. Write down number four. Hallelujah. Number four. The blood in accomplishment. Accomplishment. Hallelujah. What does that mean, Dr. Parks? I mean, Brother Parks. It means the blood is powerful. Look around, somebody say there's still power in the blood. You sat there with me preaching this good. The songwriter wrote, Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood. Would you, over, victor, over evil, a victory to win? There's power in the blood. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, wonder, working power in the blood of the land. There is power, wonder, working power in the Revelation 12 and 11, that was redeemed us. Re Revelation 5 and 9, that was redeemed us to God by the blood. Revelation 12 and 11, it takes amazing power to do that. We are told that they overcame the wicked one, Satan, by the blood of the Lamb. It takes a lot of power to do that. False religion has always denied the blood and its power. Mary Baker Eddy of the Christian Science Movement, and that's a big movement, uh, wrote uh, the material blood of Jesus is no more uh, efficacious to cleanse from sin when it was shed upon the cursed tree than when it was flowing through his veins. I want to tell you, Miss Mary Baker Eddy was wrong. Hallelujah. She may have built her a big a, a denomination out of her message of positive thinking and, and somehow or other science got involved but I'm going to tell you all the science in the world cannot match up with the blood of Jesus 